Ron Carlee is a great gift to us here at City of Light. He has an office on the third floor. He's one of our collaborative partners, sharing in dynamic ministry, touching people's lives, and motivating them to experience the power and presence of God in new and different ways. He's going to be hosting a conference we'll learn more about coming up here at City of Light in October. And it's all about setting your tone. And if you understand what that's all about, well, we hope you'll learn more about that through this journey today. We invite you to something that's experiential. So we want you to open up your hearts to experience the sounds, the vibrations, and know that the universe is ever speaking through us through unique ways. The psalmist wrote, as you read in that passage of scripture, inviting the trees, the seas, the very um, clouds in the air around us to echo forth, resound with great joy, and to celebrate the divine. So we invite you to do the same as we welcome Bron Lee to share in music and word and meditation. Would you give him a round of applause, welcoming him <laughs> to City of Life. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, it's a good day. It is a good day today. Yeah, it is. It is a good day. Um, you know what? I think, I think I'm going to start off uh, well, just by saying hello to everybody over here. I didn't get to hug any of y'all, but here's a, a big hug for y'all. I, I went in that direction, so I just wanted to you know, get that connection over here real quick. And y'all know I love y'all because we already hugged. So I, I think I hugged everybody, I'm pretty sure. Now, um, what I love about the, uh, the scripture today and the, and the tone here is, is that we're, there's this connection to... Um, there's this connection to nature. There's this omnipresent connection that we all feel. And um, uh, I had a, a pretty powerful experience years ago with, um, with this, this drum here, which is a djembe drum, uh, traditionally played in West African music, and now it's uh, made its way all around the world. And I had a, I had a powerful experience when I was uh, 20 years old. Um, I was in kind of a dark place, and I moved to Yellowstone National Park. Has anybody uh, been to Yellowstone? Yeah, a few of you, anybody over here? Yeah. So Yellowstone, if you haven't been there, uh, it's an amazing place. And, and I had this deep connection to Yellowstone. I lived there for four months. And, uh, and, I, and I, had a, I had a job working as a, uh, doing housekeeping. Uh, that was the first bed I think I officially made in my life. Uh, but uh, working as a housekeeper at the Old Faithful Inn. And when I was there at the Old Faithful Inn, I discovered this drum, the djembe. There was, a, there was a guy named Nate Dog. I think that was his real name. I don't know. But, uh, but so Nate Dog introduced me to this djembe. And when he introduced me to this djembe, it changed everything in my life. It created this connection. It con created this connection to the trees and to the geyser basin and to the, to the birds and the buffalo and all of the animals and the creatures there. There was this connection through this vibration, through this rhythm. And, and before that, I was kind of in a tough place in my life. And, but when I found that, that drum, that connection, I had an outlet to plug my energy into. And I had kind of a purpose because I felt connected to this, to this bigger place, this bigger picture, this omnipresent uh, energy. And so I want to share um, that rhythm with you all today. Uh, this was the rhythm that I learned. Uh, it's, been, it's been 20 years now uh, since that moment uh, at uh, on Yellowstone National Park on a little hill called Mary Mountain. <clears throat> See, when Nate Dog told me this rhythm, it was a triplet pattern, and it has this real feel, this really tribal, it's got this tribal feel. And when I, when I, when I learned it, I sat there for about four hours and played this rhythm over and over and over again. about rhythm is that even if you don't consider yourself a musician, you are a musical being. We all speak in rhythm. We walk in rhythm. We 
We converse in rhythm. We breathe in rhythm. We have biorhythms. Our hearts are beating in rhythm. We have a connection to this universal language of rhythm. No matter who you are or where you come from or what your first language is or your fourth language is or what no language is, you feel a connection to that pace. Right there. Everybody on a molecular level is feeling that right there. Everybody internally, because it vibrates us, it resonates with us, and it connects us. There's no quicker way to create connection than through rhythm. So what I'd like to do is I'd actually like to deepen our connection in this room right now through rhythm. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this here, and I'm going to make an offering. I'm going to offer a rhythm on this djembe drum, and then I'm going to invite all of you to clap that rhythm in response. It's not mandatory. You can do it in your mind if you'd like to, but you can manifest it in the physical form if you'd like to as well through clapping. It's like this. Hey, nice. I like that. Let's do it one more time like this. Here we go. And. All right, all right, I see now, okay. Now, what I want to do is to deepen this connection is I'm going to give you a, a rhythm that you're going to continue to play and then I'm going to play on top of it. So we're going to be creating music together, a conversation together, all right? It's like this. You're going to keep doing this rhythm. That's it. Keep it going. Just like that. Keep it going. Come on. Hey. Hey. Last one, or one more. <laughs> but do you feel that connection? You still got it in you. It's still going on in your head right there. Like, I know you got it. <laughs> You're just like pulsating it over there. It's just like, I'm like, oh, 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 oh. But it's so beautiful to have this connection and to feel this connection because no matter where we come from or who we are or who we think we are, we all have this connection. We all have this connection to ourselves and to nature. And so the way I view music is I view music as, as a tool. And I look at it as a personal essence amplifier. Every instrument that we play or every song that we sing along to, that's just us expressing ourselves through that. So today I have a couple of different instruments that I'd like to introduce you to. And since we were talking about that connection to nature, I have a little exercise I'd like to do with you. It's a listening exercise. Now I have three flutes here with me. And these are Native American style flutes. And they all come from different parts of the world. And so what I'd like to do is just to invite you to listen to these, to really listen, like to really listen, not, you know, to have that music on in the background, but to really tune in and listen to the timbre, the texture, the tone. And these are three different woods. And um, the reason I think this is so relevant is because they come from different trees. And as we know that trees have energy, they convert carbon dioxide to oxygen so that we can breathe. So scientifically, they keep us alive, which is pretty cool. I'm cool with trees. Everybody cool with trees? And deeper than that, trees have a, a spirit to them. They have an energy to them, right? Just like every living thing. And so these three different flutes come from completely different parts of the world. This first flute I want to invite you to listen to is a black walnut flute. Now I'm going to play a piece on here. Uh, and what I'd invite you to do is to close your eyes so you can really... I find that when we turn off uh, s other senses... Our other senses are able to be amplified. So by closing our eyes and just connecting with our breath, we're able to listen more deeply.
get a lot when we listen, right? So that's black walnut. And this is a wood from uh, America. And the next instrument, the next flute I'd like to introduce you to, has a completely different feel. And this is an African zebra wood from Africa. And it has a completely different timbre and feel. I'd invite you to do the same thing. Just close your eyes and have a moment and feel the connection to the flute. going to say I have favorites, but this is a very special wood. Uh, this is a custom flute that comes all the way from uh, South uh, uh, New Zealand, and uh, it's New Zealand ancient curry wood, which is carbon dated 45,000 year old ancient curry wood. Uh, it's a fascinating instrument, and what's so cool about this, uh, in this instrument here is um, uh, Years ago, as we all have complicated stories and we all have things that are preferred and less preferred in life, I, um, I had the honor of meeting my father for the first time when I was 28 years old. That was the first time I met him. I had wanted to meet my grandfather. I found out he was still alive. And I wanted to meet my grandfather. And I told my dad, uh, it's a complicated story as many things are in life. I told my dad, I said, I really want to meet my father, I mean my grandfather. And, um, and he basically denied me permission to meet him. And I have still have four brothers and sisters to this date that don't know I exist because I was a product of a one night stand. So I was an accident. And, um, and that took a, a lot to, to live with that throughout my whole life, right? That was one of those less preferred beacons that, you know, dictated a lot of my decisions that were less preferred decisions most of the time. But uh, I wanted to meet my grandfather. And what happened was I had this reoccurring dream uh, when I had my first son, Elijah. And this was about three, almost three years ago. I had this reoccurring dream where it was my grandfather, my father, myself, and my son, Elijah, sitting in, in, in space, sitting in, in commune. We were just holding space with each other, just, just being, just existing. And I kept having this dream over and over again. And I shared it with my dad. I said, look, I'm having this dream over and over. And I'm one of those guys that does not remember dreams. It's like maybe once a year I'm in this like, you know, white van without a steering wheel and I'm out of control, you know, and I, you know, I'm just, you know, it's one of those anxious dreams. Uh, but other than that, I don't remember my dreams. And so I kept having this dream over and over and over again. And I shared it with my dad and I said, I really, I, I need to meet my grandfather. And he, he pushed me away and said, if you continue to, to pursue this, I'm going to cut our relationship off. So I had to pull back. Then I had a dream. I had a dream that my grandfather passed. I'd never met my grandfather. I didn't even know his full name. And I had a dream, and I looked in the obituary. Santa Rosa, California is where, where, where he lived, and I found him. Nobody told me. Somehow that message came to me, right? I don't know how it came to me, but it came to me. So I was really upset. And um, the next day I was interacting with my son Elijah, and he did something, and he was uh, about 16, 17 months old at the time, and he did something, for those of you who have kids or have interacted with kids, uh, you know that about that, that age they do things that kind of annoy you from time to time. Uh, and so he was doing something, nagging on me, pulling on me, doing something, and I just remember I, I turned, this was the day after I found out my grandfather passed, I, I looked over and I just like yelled at him. And I got so mad. And then he started crying. And in that moment, I scooped him up and I, I pulled him close and I said, I'm sorry, that's not your story. This isn't the energy that you deserve. This stops today. And in that moment, I stopped and we rewrote the story. Because the story that I was living in was an old one. 
one that was in shame. But this was not for him. And so I stopped that. I stopped that moment. And the reason I, I share this with you is because in that conscious decision of stopping, stopping and rewriting the story, right, of changing directions. We all have the ability to do that. When we choose to see red, we see red. When we choose to see or fill ourselves with golden light, we fill ourselves with golden light or white light. We fill ourselves with that, with that conscious choice. And then we start to vibrate on that frequency, put that energy out, put those thoughts out, start to attract those people, which is how you ended up here with this amazing community. So what happened then was I had another dream about a flute. I'd never played flute in my life, but I had this dream about a flute. And long story long, because I'm a long storyteller. Love you. I went on a search, and I connected with this particular flute. And it's called a grandfather flute, all the way from New Zealand, like I said. Ancient curry wood. And the moment I played this flute, I felt a connection to my grandfather. I never met him, but I am absolutely certain that when I play this flute, somehow it connects with him, with his spirit. It connects with him. I'm certain of it. Like, it's like no question in my mind it connects with him. So all that being said, I don't have a favorite flute, but this is the grandfather flute. So I invite you to close your eyes and go inward. got some power to it, doesn't it? Yeah, there's something about trees and converting trees into flutes that we can play and express ourselves through. They really connect us to something.
That instrument's called, you still film it? Okay, I got it. <laughs> that instrument is, uh, is called a, a hand pan, but I have renamed it Metallic Echo Drum. Uh, because after I did a, I did a big uh, healthcare convention, and when I performed on stage um, for this healthcare community, and, and one of the biggest things in healthcare is, uh, you know, basically taking care of the caregivers, right? Uh, it's one of the biggest things is burnout. If any of you are in healthcare, you understand that. Um, but uh, so a lot of it was around sound healing. And when I, when I came off stage, this, uh, this one, he was an engineer, and he said, what was that metallic echo drum thing you played? And I said, that's the new name for the handpan. <laughs> um, but what's so fascinating about this instrument is that what you're hearing that gives it that kind of otherworldly sound is that it's actually sympathetic resonance. So what's happening is when I'm playing this note, you're actually hearing other notes resonate. You're hearing multiple notes in there, right? So not only every time I play this note, you're hearing really of some variation of around 16 notes in there. Some of them are very subtle, some of the overtones, right? But what's so cool about that is this metallic echo drum is so similar to the way that we operate in the world. Right? Because when we produce a sound ourselves, it's resonating with other people. It's resonating with our family members, our friends, our coworkers, right? Other people in our, our spiritual communities. Every time we play a note, it's resonating. And so that's through conversation. That's through a, a, a generous offer, a, a kind gesture, or a less preferred, or a not so kind gesture, right? But we choose that. And so my question for you is, how are you putting your sonic signature on life? Your energetic signature on life? In everything that you do, how are, how are you choosing to show up in the world and set your tone for the people around you? And, and let's start with something basic, because it doesn't have to be so complicated as a, as a metallic echo drum or you know, a djembe or a crystal bowl or a flute or any of that. It just starts with our voices. Right? Because remember, we converse in rhythm, we walk in rhythm, we talk in rhythm. Everything we do is musical. So what's the tone that you're setting? Literally, what's the tone that you're setting just by saying your name? Right? Like, how do you say your name? That sets the tone immediately for how people are going to uh, reciprocate with you because that sympathetic resonance is going into them. They're feeling that. Right? If I say my name is Broncar, you guys are all thinking, Broncar. Right? But I would say, Broncar. You're all thinking, Broncar, right? You know what I mean? You immediately, you immediately resonate with that. And you're going to reflect that energy back to me. So I have just a, a quick exercise I'd invite you all to do is just to, I want you to look to the person next to you. Look to the person next to you. And I would like for you to say your name the way you would like people to say your name, the way that represents you in the world. Say your name to the person next to you, the way that you want it to be said. Yeah. Hey, look, we got jazz hands. We got jazz hands, right? Right? Imagine if we now imagine if we did that every time, right? And we did jazz hands. We would get jazz hands in return, wouldn't we? Right? Because Yeah, exactly. Yes, Alan. Because we're getting that harmonic collaboration, right? I mean I mean scientifically our mirror neurons are are are, are watching and they're responding, right? And then sonically, we're resonating with that and we're responding, right? So now we, I want to do that one more time. And I love the jazz hands. This was so good. I, this was beautiful, right? Don't change a thing, right? Or, or whoever. Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> For those of you who didn't see it, you felt it, but he went, Paul. <laughs> now I want, I want to do it again. And this time, and this time, when you say it, the person that's receiving the name, reflect it back to them. Reflect that name back to them if there's a gesture or a tone. Do it again and say your name to the person next to you and then reflect it back. So you're reflecting the name back and the energy back. And you can do it in any word. There's, do you need more structure? Okay, we need... Do we need more structure? You pick... Okay, no, we don't. Okay, good. John. Broncar. Oh, wow. What's your name? 
Leafy, I love it. That's awesome. That's so cool. Who else? What's your name? David. Ooh, I like that. Ooh, yeah, and you leaned in with it too. I like that. What about you? What is it? Archie. It's nice to meet you, Archie. What about you? Martha. Hey. Jeff? I'm Jeff. I like that. He's like, oh, yeah, okay. I got, I'm leaning. I'm chilling. And isn't that cool that we have control over that, right? We choose as we show up to set that tone, right? It's to set that tone, and we reflect it back right away as humans. Now, um, I want to do one piece because I feel like I'm fast approaching my time, and I don't want to go over because I am. Okay. He did. <laughs> And you're not denying it. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, now one thing that uh, Reverend Paul mentioned earlier is that I am uh, producing uh, a conference. And we're producing uh, actually a, a really fun event here in this space. And, and as he also mentioned, I have an office on the third floor. Uh, so I'm involved with a lot of wellness. And I use a lot of you know, sound healing and things like that. And I'm with a group called Remember Your Truth on the third floor. And uh, we have a great little, little tribe up there. And, uh, and so what we're doing is we're producing an event here, October 6th. And what it is is it's, it's called the Set Your Tone Summit. And it's all about getting clear on how you set your tone in the world, right? What kind of energetic signature you're, you're putting on the world, how you're showing up in the world. And so what I'm doing is I'm kind of uh, the lead producer, so I'm at the helm of it. And I'll be doing some things throughout the day. But there's going to be 10 amazing presenters doing TED, TEDx-style presentations where they're shorter 10, 15, 20-minute presentations. And there's also going to be some amazing uh, um, sound healers and musicians, a lot of people that, that maybe you've heard of in the community here, one of my good friends, Don Simmons, who's the, uh, one of the founders of ISTA, which is the International Sound Therapy Association. Uh, they're responsible for some of these uh, amazing crystal bowls here. Uh, also, John Stringer, who's a great musician. My good friend, Rainy Suggs, uh, who's also a fantastic facilitator and experienced strategist, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it's going to be a really, really cool event. And actually, after uh, my presentation today uh, with y'all, we're going to be giving away a couple of tickets. So make sure to come and, come and see us. We'll be hanging out back there. If you want to get involved with this event, it's going to be a really fun uh, full day experience. So... Um, what I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to close out with a song here. Um, it's a bit more of a traditional uh, spiritual song. <clears throat> that was not it. That was just me drinking water. <laughs> but this song is, is one, of those, one of those songs that just has that, it just has that energy to it. it. It has that mystery to it. Right? It just has this, this feeling, this otherworldly feeling to it. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. And I'll close with this. And uh, thank you so much for having me out today in your amazing community. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you. 
crap, I have, I have another cool thing I could do if we have time. Let's have another cool thing. Okay, I want to do one more cool thing. Um, just because, you know, with this, I just, I want to read this. I want to read this one more time because it was so amazing. Let's hear it from the sky with the earth joining in and a huge round of applause from the sea. Let the wilderness turn cartwheels, animals come dance, put every tree of the forest in the choir. Shout your words of praise of the divine. Everybody, let loose and sing. Strike up the band. Man. So on that note, I'd like to do one thing together as a community. Can we all take a deep breath in and exhale out? Now, this time, I would invite you all to take a breath in, and when we exhale, just make an ah sound and let it go. Ready? Ah. Oh, that felt so good. Okay, let's do the same thing with an E sound. E. We got to do an O if we got this far. Oh. <laughs> and now I want to go back to that, that ah sound one more time. And this time when we let it out, let it go, let it go. And then, and then watch me. It's going to be like we're going on a roller coaster. Okay. Ah. tell me that you were all singers <laughs> amazing right now who out there believes that they are uh, a singer right yeah yeah now who loves music okay yes right we all love music but we don't think we're all singers and maybe we're not but we are all musical beings right some of us don't believe we are but we are all musical beings right we do it every time I mean when somebody comes up behind you and scares you, you go whoa that's singing that's a note, right? When we ride a roller coaster, we are singing. We are going, no, nah! right? And most of us sing in the shower. Yes, yes, we do. Or, you know, we're driving. We have our favorite tune on, 285. And we're sitting there in traffic and we're like, uh, uh, uh but it's something. So we are all singers to a degree. Now, now what I like to do is this, is um, to take it to the next level. I like to do um, a song together. And what I want is I'm going to split it right down the middle here. You're, you're good. You don't have to move. You don't have to move. And tell me your name again. We've met a couple of times. Norma, it is such an honor to meet you again, Norma. I've seen you here. You help out all the time with, with the out, community outreach work that y'all do. So it's really nice to meet you again. Thanks for being here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to split it right down the middle. And over here, we've got the first section. And over here, we've got the second section. It's not that y'all are better or worse. It's just number two, okay? It's not better or worse. One and two, I just happen to do, do that, okay? We could say A and B, right? Or right and left, either way. Love you guys just as much. So over here, we're going to sing a part. It's a very simple part. And over here, we're going to sing a second part, okay? And we're going to really, the point of this is not to sing pretty or beautifully, right? The point of this is just to feel that self-healing that happens when we sing those vowel sounds out. Because we all feel a resonant in our, in our chest, in our core, when we make those ah sounds. They're relaxing us, right? You're even doing it again right there silently with a yawn. I like that. That was good. You're practicing. Like, <laughs> I could feel it, though. You were internally, you were just, no. I like That was good. That was good. That was mime singing. I like that. It was good. So over here, we're going to sing this one part, okay? It's going to be a very basic part. And as you're singing, I want you just to... Just to let it go, just like the scripture says, let it go. Feel that connection, okay? It's going to be like this. Bo-wo, bo-wo, bo-wo. Be-ba-ba-doo, bo-wo, bo-wo, bo-wo. Be-ba-ba-doo, bo-wo, bo-wo, bo-wo. Be-ba-ba-doo, bo-wo, bo-wo, bo-wo. Keep it going. Add the snap, too, if you can. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Woo. Okay. Uh. Yaka dega haka. Yaka dega haka. Yaka dega haka. 
Yakadega Haga, 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 Oh, Yakadega Haga, Yakadega Haga, Yakadega Haga, at the snap. Yakadega Haga, Yakadega Haga, Yakadega Haga. Hey! Beautiful singing, beautiful. Now, what I'd invite you to do is, uh, this has been a, a, an honor being here today. And I'd like to just close out. And invite you all to feel the feeling that you're feeling right now. Feel the feeling that you're feeling. Internalize that feeling. It's very real. Feel the love and the connection. The love and the connection that you have with your community. So it is. So it is.